Hello everybody, it's Lucas McIntosh here and I'm back with some more WrestleMania 2000 for the Nintendo 64. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out one of my retro Let's Play videos, I really appreciate it. If you are indeed enjoying my content and would like to see more, why not hit that subscribe button because that way you will be instantly subscribed to my channel and notified every time I upload a new video and I've got new content coming each and every single week. Okay, so it's been, oh, I would say about a week, well it definitely feels like a week anyway since I've done any WrestleMania 2000. Part of the reason for that is I've been really ill um, and I did kind of plan this thing where I would play WWF No Mercy also for the N64 alongside this game so I'm actually feeling a lot better now so I kind of put some No Mercy, more No Mercy videos out sort of I think yesterday I've done one and probably upload some more of that tonight. So I figured since I'm feeling better, let's get some more WrestleMania 2000 done. So last time, and it does feel like a while ago now, I played as Triple H and I won the hardcore title. So I now need to carry on now and play through the game's kind of career mode. Now this, I want to say, is a lot longer than No Mercy. And there's a lot of matches, which I don't mind because it kind of helps pad, pad the game out and everything. And everything feels like more of a struggle in this game. Even though No Mercy is a struggle, this one, the matches can be quite lengthy. But the AI is nowhere near as deadly as No Mercy. Let's check out Triple H's cool entrance. what an entrance and he's even got China with him as well so essentially the goal of WrestleMania 2000 is to basically work your way through an entire I believe it's an entire year of WWF events um, until it cultivates in a massive match at WrestleMania so you have to win so many matches and get title shots and stuff to try and earn a shot at the WWF heavyweight title obviously um there is a kind of a storyline mode here where events happen which will prevent you from doing that run-ins and such and little cutscenes with Vince McMahon and the corporation and stuff but even though WWF No Mercy to me is like well considered to be the greatest wrestling game of all time and improved upon this I've still got a soft spot for this game I think it's absolutely brilliant and I played it a lot when I was a kid it's just that good to quote Triple H that damn good you know it's perfect I mean if you don't get on with No Mercy and you you guys will know seeing my videos how frustrated I can become at those games um, because and it's not that I hate the games it's the fact or think they're unfair it's just that they're so challenging I, it really does feel like a proper match sometimes trying to win but my point is if you're finding that too difficult then this is a great game to start with because it's slightly easier and it eases you into the kind of Aki system or the way of playing things. However, if you find this hard, then I would suggest the WCW Aki games. Once again, I've done those and you can check those out on my channel. You'll find them in the playlists. Oh, it's so good to have almost a proper voice. So, yeah, I've been basically, um, I've got a viral infection. <laughs> I've been too personal. I've been very ill. I've been to the doctors. It's quite funny because um, I went the other day. I made an appointment, I was finally able to get through, you know what it's like making an appointment, it's like, we've got no appointments, so I just imagine myself phoning up and, and it'll be like, uh, I'd, like I'd like to make an appointment to see a doctor please, and the receptionist would probably laugh and say, oh we wouldn't have any today, no of course you wouldn't, but to be honest my doctors have got a lot better, <laughs> in retrospect, because uh, they kind of now, they ask you proper questions over the telephone to basically ensure that you really do need to see one and trust me I did I don't ever go to the doctors like with a cold uh, you know so I've got to be dying before I'll see a doctor as many things can be treated at home I think but anyway I went to the doctors and it was it was like an urgent care practitioner who saw me and um, like we had a lengthy conversation about what might be wrong with me I said my throat hurts it's very sore 
and then he asked me a bunch of questions and then at 10 minutes later he was like um, oh I'm not a doctor I'm like a paramedic so I have to go and consult with the doctor now <laughs> so he went away for 10 minutes and I'm like oh my god so to be fair they give me antibiotics and some throat spray and the first couple of days was rough man because I couldn't talk at all probably to the relief of others because my voice is kind of my main asset really but so it's been a few days since, since my voice has recovered well enough and I've been taking I've still got a course of antibiotics to go so I'm doing okay now my voice has literally come back this morning and I thought yay I can do some WrestleMania 2000 for you guys so that's basically how my week's been and that's why there hasn't been really a succession of videos as there normally has because I like to do a stream of um, a stream of videos really and get multi multitude of them done but most of my time has been spent like just recovering which hasn't been too bad because I'll be honest with you um, it's nice just to be able to sit down and kind of um, take a holiday and just relax so in many ways even though I'm sick it's like I can just sit down and play video games and just enjoy myself really so that's kind of what I've been doing it's been nice watching YouTube videos and stuff and relaxing putting my feet up watching EastEnders <laughs> so yeah so hopefully now I can get more videos done anyway I'm not even talking about the game I've just decimated Al Snow and I'm moving on up now essentially so I've put two pedigrees on Al and we move so we're only in June I have to make it all the way to next April I believe and there are different obviously pay-per-views you need to participate in as well if you go to champion it tells you who the champion is oh my god anybody remember when Midian was European champion that's in this game Jeff Jarrett naturally the intercontinental champion the Hardy Boys are the tag champions and the WWF champion is Big Show here we go Sunday Night Heat okay Triple H versus Steve Blackman Let's do it. The lethal cheddar himself. Oh, great. But one thing I like about this game, as I said, I don't mean to compare sort of No Mercy, because even though they're the same, they've got different structures, is that you can just play through the year and it's very relaxed. I mean, obviously wins and losses count a lot more, I think, in this game, because you do need to win to get your hands on the title. Uh, like I said, in No Mercy, they do kind of relax it a little bit, although there are matches that you have to win to progress the storyline, and the storyline changes accordingly. But it's a nice sort of, you know, typical playthrough of a, of a WWF pay-per-view or event or WWF calendar year, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. Steve Blackman, man. But I just remember, like, having just played Attitude and, like, I'd bugged my parents for this game, for that game, for my N64, and I thought it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Um, and I was a bit disappointed by it. Um, even though the entrances were cool, I think I got it for the entrances really, and they create a pay-per-view. But I don't know; it, it looked good at the time. But then I saw screenshots for this, and I was bowled away. And I saw, I read every kind of magazine I could get my hands on about this game. I was like, I have to have this game. So luckily, I managed to get a job and managed to afford it. So i literally pre-ordered it from my local electronics boutique i think i've told this story before but it come with a free t-shirt and the t-shirt was like always about two sizes too small do you ever found that with like um, old school kind of freebies they're net it's like because they rush them out say if you want a, a t-shirt or anything it's always like too small or something that maybe your kid brother or sister would probably wear you know I mean that in the best possible way, it's just you could wear it, it's stylish, but it's just too, way too small for you. Which I didn't mind because I actually give it to my younger brother. And we were all kind of wrestling fans anyway, so it didn't really matter. I mean, to me it was just a t-shirt. But I did, I do remember asking them, 
I, yeah, Master's come back. I was like, I went in the store and he said, right, you get a free T-shirt with this game. I said, um, do you have the T-shirt in large? He said, no, they're all the same generic size. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, come on, Mr. Blackman, you're going down, my friend. Yeah, but I don't think I ever completed this as a kid. I mean, I was more into, like, Perfect Dark and, like, GoldenEye and things like that. I probably played that more often than this one. And I did, I did play it, but whether it was because the career mode, like, went on and on, because it does go on for quite a while. I mean, uh, one whole year and stuff. I think I found it quite lengthy, but maybe I didn't... I don't think I had the time to dedicate to it, because I was... Well, I had a sort of job. It was like a training um, organisation where you would it was really rubbish because you'd go somewhere and they'd pay you 50 quid a week and then they'd give you like days where you'd have to go in the, in their classroom and like learn about I don't know health and safety and other stuff but most of the time you could just doss around and have a cup of tea it wasn't too bad and then there was a time when well obviously being young and just all I wanted to do pretty much was just stay in and play video games and I was you know I was a hard worker I was working hard, but I remember just, I guess there was some harsh winters here in the, in the late 90s, and I just remember feeling cold and thinking, you know what, all I want to do is stay in and play video, because that's literally all I want to do, and so um, eventually I just stopped going to the training organisation, and they still paid me, it was great, that's how disorganised they were, I must have been paid like, oh, it must be like over two grand over the course of... I don't know, a year. So basically I stopped going. I would have 50 quid at the end of the week and I would just go and buy whatever new game was out at the time. So I was able to build up quite a collection of uh, N64 games. And I remember even buying Resident Evil 2 when it came out for the Nintendo 64. And like, I know, kicking myself for getting rid of it. I don't know what happened to it. But it just, you know, like, it's like all those old consoles. I often wonder where did they go? What happened to them? I don't seem to have it anymore. So yeah, by that I remember buying Shadow Man for the Nintendo 64 and like Chew Rock 2. I'd always buy a new game. So it was good times, you know. And to be honest, I've kind of got my wish in many ways. I mean, even though I'd like YouTube to be a career, and I'm kind of just starting out. It kind of is a job to me now because I get to sit down and and play video games for the comfort of my own home and it's such a privilege to be able to do it you know and it's fun as well and it's I remember as a little kid thinking wow you know wouldn't it be so cool to be able to do that and now here we are in 20 nearly 2020 so 2019 and you can do that now it's it's nice it's nice really nice but I do remember like swap shops, does anyone else remember those where you could go in and like, well I used to be able to pay £2 and swap a game, or you pay a bit more to get like a more expensive game and stuff, and the guy, I was so envious of the guy who ran it, he had like all the top SNES games like Street Fighter, all the Street Fighters, he'd have the little CRT TV, like piles of games everywhere, a cup of tea in his hand, and I'd just be like in awe. And then you'd go in and like Street Fighter 2, like Turbo would be on his TV and demo mode. And I thought that was so cool. You know, and I thought I really want to be that guy. <laughs> that was my, my kind of wish, to be honest. Anyway, let's get this done. Yeah, I seem to be talking a lot about my retro gaming memories today. Wow. You know. Most of that just come back. I used to spend most of my time hanging out at the swap shop because I didn't really go to school as a child. So I I go to like a community centre for two hours a day. So from about nine till eleven, <laughs> I do maths and English, which were the main subject at the time. And then like I'd hang around with my friends. We'd go back to his place and we play snares all day. It was great. It's like every day I would get to go to his house and his his dad would work. So his dad was like always out and we'd just play on the snares, it was, it was really awesome. So I got to play a lot of games that I didn't have at home. So I got exposed to like Mario Kart quite early on, Mario World, um, Lamborghini American Challenge, Turtles in Time, 
and it was like it was awesome and then eventually when I got the snares or we got the snares I should say in our household because um, we got it quite late I think a few years before it was about to go out you know uh, my brother actually he had a job and so he actually uh, purchased Killer Instinct and like Link to the Past and stuff and I remember getting um, I was asked what I wanted for my birthday and I asked for uh, Super Mario Kart and Mario World because those were the titles that I enjoyed playing at the time so we did actually get quite a collection of SNES games there we go. but one game I just never really got to play when I was a kid and I have played it since obviously because it's on my channel was Donkey Kong Country 2 I wanted that game so badly you would not believe it was like so good I mean even from screenshots in gaming magazines I knew it was going to be good and I just could never it was like 55 quid and like to this day like it just oh it's such a good game and like I remember um, I bought Donkey Kong Land 2 for the Game Boy because it was literally hot, almost half the price and that was such a good version I mean and even though it's a completely different game it it is kind of a, a pseudo version of Donkey Kong Country 2 it's not a port but it borrows sort of many of the same aesthetics and stuff and that was fantastic and then when I become a bit older and eBay became a thing I, I would go on eBay and then I suddenly thought you know what a game I really want because I still had my snares I was like I want Donkey Kong Country 2 and then I, I like typed it in I support Donkey Kong Country 2 and I kind of thought oh that's going to be lots you know lots of money I found it for like five pounds online and I was like oh my god incredible so yeah it's like the price is going up and down I'm surprised that game isn't worth more because that to me is like I think it's one of the greatest games ever created the greatest games ever made personally There we go, we're just giving Midian two pedigrees. I should be able to pin him now. I can't remember if this was a title match, but, well, let's have a look. Yes, we got him. Midian is down. There we go, Midian's been pinned. Oh, it's for the hardcore title. So, he couldn't beat me anyway. I just... You can kind of win in a straightforward style anyway. I mean, hardcore is encouraged, encouraged, but you know you can just win with straight wrestling. So I'm in the King of the Ring tournament apparently. So it's me versus Mr. Ass. We got Big Show versus The Rock, Hardcore Holly versus Road Dog, and Val Venus versus Jeff Jarrett. So this is it now, King of the Ring. So I have to win this, I think, to be in contention for the title. Ah, badass Billy Gunn. Let's have a sip of my tea, guys. Oh, yeah. Wow. Looks so cool in this game. Ah, uh -huh. Right, okay. Right. So this is the first match in the tournament, so I have to win. Oh my god, Billy Gunn has just blocked everything that I'm doing. I've got to beat this guy. Oh, nice. Oh my god, did you see that? I didn't know you could do that. You could, like, steal the opponent's taunts from them. I kind of remember The Rock's promo against Billy Gunn. It was like, um, oh, what was it? And he was like, Billy Gunn got down on his knees and then The Rock did, like, an imitation, like, Dear God, my name's Billy. <laughs> no, this. 
I can't any settle as God said. It doesn't matter what your name is. Oh, that's funny. The uh, the rock man, what a character. It doesn't matter what your name is. Very clever.